race the first 20 minutes of the game, I think I'd be feeling a lot better about what happened today. Um, you know, it wound up being a really competitive game, which I thought it was. Um, give them credit. They responded to the way they, their, their guys. Uh, Bill Porter, Porter and the staff did a good job in preparing their guys to play with a more physical determination this time around. Um, and, and had us on our heels, quite honestly, for the first half. Uh, but also credit to our guys for responding to that and putting ourselves in a position to uh, you know, have a shot to win. Uh, tough league, tough loss, and uh, just proud of their fight to come back and compete the way they did, but obviously disappointed we didn't get the job. When you have stretches like that in the first half, how just how do you think your team was able to overcome that to force overtime? Uh, that's a good question. I'd like to go back and watch the film and figure out why we didn't start better. I'm sure it had a lot to do with them. Uh, they were clearly a more physically aggressive team to start the game. Um, so I, you know, without being able to get into too much detail, I'm just thankful that they did respond and compete the way they did down the stretch. And um, you know, it's a possession game right there, which is what most of them are in this conference. What was your viewpoint of the ending? Which part? There's a lot going on. <laughs> <laughs> just Carmen Johnson, just the steal. Yeah, I mean, the you know, that kid didn't play against us. This is first. This is his first battle game. Um, I, I told our guys on Thursday when we started prep, uh, and again right before the game, that I thought he would play with an edge. Um, and you know, the numbers show he was definitely a difference maker today. Musa said that he was late for the bus. That's why he did the start. Um, how much did that impact that start? You think not having Moose on the floor early? I'm not sure. Um, certainly, he's been playing well. Played well. Um, but my job is, you know, we preach accountability around here. And I'm not gonna say that lost us the game by any means. You know, because we got the ball inside still and had opportunities to convert, and we didn't. So, but you know, it's part of my responsibility is to keep teaching those guys. So he's better prepared when he leaves us. In the late in the game, though, he became such a huge factor. When he fouls out, how much do you miss him down the stretch with the lobs, his defense? Yeah, I would, I would say that was more impactful than you know, the start of the game, not having him in there at the end uh, to rebound or to be a screener to help guys get open. Um, but he's getting better. I mean, that kid continues to improve. Uh, it's one of the silver linings in what's been a difficult and frustrating season uh, is that anybody with two eyes can see the strides that he's made from November 9th when we played our first game to today. Is was there some confusion with this foul situation? I mean, there seemed to be. I obviously don't keep track of fouls myself. Um, and at the end of the day, you got to trust what the official scorekeeper says. He said he had five. Unless we can go back and verify something different, let's move over. It seemed like you guys were down 9 to 11 points for the majority of the game. How frustrating is that whenever you can't put a run together until the end? Yeah, we did. We, we actually couldn't put a run together because we couldn't convert our layups. Uh, even in the first half, we had a chance to cut it to three. Uh, we get a turnover, and I think Woody missed the layup, and then maybe M.A. got it and missed the layup, or Caleb got it and missed the layup. And, you know, those are plays you just got to make at this level of basketball. You know? and so we didn't make them today. They did. Um, and then, obviously, two crucial plays in my mind was we lost Moja a couple times in, in, um, in overtime, which were you know, opportunities for us to really kind of get some separation because both times I think we had to lead when it happened. So. All those little plays you go back and pick apart um, because that's that's what the game is. It comes down to, you know, man, they, four points, but it's a one possession game, essentially. You know, and, um, they made the plays we did. You mentioned in the past that Woody's kind of earned the minutes over Keelan. What does Keelan have to do to get back on the court? Let's work harder, be better, do the right things every day uh, on and off the court. And uh, when you do that, you get rewarded in this program. When you don't, you don't. How nice game, right? Yeah, the option of trying to get a two, a two for one, but you seem to take your time to try to set something up. I, I can't remember the play you're talking to. I know Musa fouled out pretty late. Can't remember the exact situation at the time. But yeah, I mean he had it going. You know, he found a good rhythm getting in there. We thought we could put some foul pressure on him as well. Um, and he obviously got to the free throw line and converted, but yeah, we put him in a lot of pick and rolls even when Musa was in because we think that's a kind of a dynamic. Tandem to, to run that action against the way they defend specifically 
know, Musa even got a couple easy baskets because of that. Um, but honestly, I can't right now find the play that you're referring to specifically. Was was the law within the regulation to Musa to tie the game? Was that the design, or was it because they were guarding the three so heavily? No, we weren't actually going for three. We actually were trying to get a layup. That wasn't the first option, but it was the next option. You know, we we were trying to go to Avery. They denied him pretty aggressively, so we got it to Ice, and then we told Musa to come set the screen if that happens. And you know, Ice and him have developed a pretty good chemistry here lately of of those actions, and you know. It was, it was what we were looking for as a secondary option. Of all the individual strides for Musa, you mentioned the connection with Ice. How has he developed, I guess, those relationships with teammates on the floor? Um, I mean, that's part of that's part of the game. It's part of the challenge with having a whole bunch of new guys or the transfer, right? You get guys from different places that don't know each other, and you just throw them out there, and, and hopefully they figure it out sooner than later. Um, but over the course of the season, it's it's been good. You know, I think he's earned the respect of his teammates. Uh, because of the way he works and the way he allows us to coach him. Um, and that kid's got a bright future if he continues to do and be about the right things and allow himself to, to be coached. The thing I keep pointing to, he's just 19 years old. Um, his best basketball is certainly in front of him. And, you know, guys like that have a chance to play this game for a long time and, and make a nice living doing it. I can't remember if it was the regulation or in overtime. Uh, kind of a free throw for yeah, it's not the first time. It's kind of frustrating, um, but I get it. I mean, as a coach, you do whatever you can to try to give yourself a teammate. So just so everybody knows, we run a we run a fast break off a free throw. We try to get the ball in quick and get it down the court. And it happened a couple times in non-conference, and then one time earlier conference play, well, the coach sends a guy to the scores table with no intention on actually putting him in the game. But the guy at the scores table stops the play, and then. If they don't put them in, you really kind of gain an advantage. So a little gamesmanship there, but you know, it's part of it's part of coaching. First time around, you guys led and had a lot of success going to the post and having a high percentage shots, but they did something different uh, to kind of take that away from you guys and of course you made a four percent shots. Um I don't think so. <laughs> I mean certainly that was the game plan. We got the ball in there quite a bit in the first few possessions. They were just empty possessions. Uh, and that led to some of us having to try to make plays off the dribble too much individually, which is the reason we only had one assist in the first half, because we just weren't getting production thrown it inside and playing out. When that changed in the second half, we got more inside out, we got more ball movement, and therefore we had more success offensively. Even though we didn't necessarily throw it in, we were driving it and pitching it out. Even Rondell's three to cut it to two was, was that exact action. So um, I just think they were more physically committed to trying to stop us from scoring on and uh, they did a good job with it. How this game rank in terms of physicality this season? I feel like just across the board, both teams, there's a ton of people in foul trouble. Yeah, it's the conference. Um, most of the time when you talk about the conference being as good defensively across the board as we have been all year, it's because the defense is all really physical. They make it hard for you to get catches. They make it hard for you to get into the offense that you practice every day. Um, and and you know, you've got to make sometimes challenge more difficult shots. Um, and obviously, he's implementing that style of play here with some guys that they seem to be buying in and, and, and figuring it out. Any other questions? All right. I will